internet, welcome to Film Theory, the show that's gone barking mad. Today we're heading back into the wonderful world of Bluey, the hit animated show coming to us live from the land down under. Now in case you've missed out on this one, Bluey's all about a family of dogs known as the Healers. There's Bluey, her sister Bingo, her father Bandit, and her mum Chili. Each 8 minute episode sees them engaging in simple everyday adventures like playing keepy uppy with a balloon, or preparing for the family barbecue, all in a way that's super fun for kids and super relatable for adults. This is great! They're learning a lesson and we get the house clean! But what's really made Bluey I Iconic are the episodes that focus on the wild imagination games that the family plays, which range from whale watching, to pretending there's a fairy causing mischief in the house, to their dad acting as a human claw machine. Insert coin for awesome prizes. Legitimately, this is one of the best animated kids shows that I've seen in years, tackling all the joys and stresses that are both childhood and parenting in like the purest way possible. It is so good. True story, I started watching the show with Ollie about a year ago, and while he's now graduated up into the world of Gravity Falls, I am so proud of you buddy. I'm still late night binging episodes of Bluey and relating hard to Bandit. But the more I watch, the more one question lingers in my mind. Is magic real in this world? You see, the imagination on display as the characters play their games really goes to the next level. Like, really! These characters are incredibly invested in their backyard adventures. Whether it's something like a very aggressive puppet. We can handle this, Mom! Pinnacle! Ow! My back! My neck! My back and my neck! Whiplash! Call my lawyer! to something as elaborate as becoming an escaped monkey rampaging through the yard. <laughs> Section. And while most of it can be written off as just parents committing to the bit to like the nth degree, there are other moments in the show that seem impossible to believe, like the episode where the kids literally learn to use magic to influence their surroundings, or when Bingo uses a feather wand to turn everything heavy. Cereal heavy! <laughs> Oh, what's going on? And as you really watch the show, more and more of these strange things keep popping up. These imaginary games seem to have a ridiculous amount of influence on both the characters and the world around them. Enough so that I just kind of have to ask, is magic real in Bluey? Are all of these games actually the result of the characters casting spells, hexes, and charms on each other? Well, after digging back into the world of Bluey and pulling out some classic theorist tricks, I believe that I can definitively prove the answer to be yes. Grab your wands and sticky geckos, friends, as we dig into the bonafide evidence of the magical conspiracy taking place in the world of Bluey. Now, on the surface, you might look at a bunch of these games and just think that it's the imagination of children at work, that they're just very invested in their games. But there's commitment, and then there's just going way beyond what you'd expect to come out of real kids at these ages. Like, to the point that these games don't feel like a bunch of toddlers playing make-believe games anymore. And this is firmly on display from the very first episode of the series. In episode one, Magic Xylophone, we see Bluey and Bingo playing with a xylophone that can free anyone in place. They just straight up stop mid-step and mid-sentence. At first, Bingo and Bluey use the xylophone to freeze Bandit in place and play some pranks on him, and he commits to the bit so much that he's frozen when the kids aren't around, and the neighbors start giving him funny looks. Now, to be fair, you could absolutely just chalk that up to a good old dad playing along with the kids, but here's the thing. Later in the episode, Bingo gets upset because Bluey won't let her have a turn with the xylophone, and when she finally gets a hold of it later on in the episode, Bingo uses it to freeze Bluey, and it works. If Bluey truly wants the xylophone as badly as she does, and doesn't want to play along, this seven-year-old girl, she could just easily break the rules of the game and take it from Bingo, but she doesn't. Instead, she gets a pretty serious heart-to-heart -heart with Bingo while frozen. You always never take turns with me, and it makes me feel sad. Now, this wouldn't be such a big deal if this was just a one-off event, but it's not. This sort of extreme imagination game is a common occurrence throughout the series. In the episode Feather Wand, again, this is the one where Bingo uses a feather to turn things heavy, we see her turn the toilet seat heavy just as her dad's getting ready to do his business. And instead of breaking from the game, he chooses to run downstairs and relieve himself, uh, well, it's unclear where exactly, but it's implied to be in the front yard based on Chili's scream and Bandit greeting the neighbor. Oh. Ah! Morning, Wendy! I mean, you could be committed to a game, sure, but in this moment, Bandit's exposing himself to his loved ones and his neighbors in a completely inappropriate way. Public indecency is a literally a crime. Are you doing that just for the sake of an imagination game for your four and seven-year-old? Speaking of being inappropriate, there are also instances like the season two episode Dance Mode, where the kids are given three chances to flick one of their parents' tails and say, Dance which forces the parent to dance no matter where they are. Seems like it should be a fun game, right? Well, it would be if the kids didn't decide to use it on Chili when she's crossing the road. Ooh, shake it, Chili! 
Now, obviously, this is super embarrassing for Chili, but look at her dance moves. If she were truly in full control of her body and wanted to get out of the situation, she could turn away from the crowd of cars so she doesn't have to face them, or use moves that move her further along in the street faster. Instead, she's shaking her thing in front of Wendy's windshield. Wendy apparently is just the recipient of a lot of these embarrassing healer moments. Now, again, if this was just a one-off event, we could just ignore it, but it happens again to Bandit in the post office. Uh, are you okay? I'm fine, just ignore this. This right here is just disrespectful to both the store clerk and the massive line of people waiting behind him. Even when the store clerk politely asks him to stop, Bandit says that he can't. If you could just stop dancing for a moment. I would if I could, mate. Hey, twinkle toes! It's either magic, or the healers just suck. And it's here, when the games start to affect their everyday lives, when you really start to see the pretend nature of the games break down. For instance, let's take a look at Season 3's episode Sheepdog, where Bandit pretends to be a sheep to distract the kids away from bothering their mom. Meh. But here's the thing, when Bluey isn't looking, Sheep Bandit still decides to break into Wendy's yard and start eating her laundry. He even headbutts her in the rear end when she threatens to bring in Chili. That right there, again, is a level of commitment that's either the result of magic, or just extreme irresponsibility on the part of Bandit. Also, seriously, Wendy has got to be the most patient neighbor ever to be living next to these public nuisances. But the thing that really decides it is that even when the kids stop playing the game, Bandit doesn't drop the act. He is still acting like a sheep 20 minutes later, while his kids have been upstairs playing with the neighbor and his wife is just wrapping up her alone time. Is everything okay? <laughs> yep, all good here. Why is he still doing it when everyone else has moved on from the game? But perhaps most compelling of all is Daddy Drop-Off, when Bandit has to take the kids to school and they're running late. And yet, just as he's running to the car, Bingo finds a leaf and uses it to trap Bandit in slow motion. Rack him and stack him, kids, we gotta- <laughs> If Bandit's late getting his kids to school, you'd think that he'd just ignore the game and get them in the car. That'd be the responsible thing. He could make something up about how school negates the imaginary game, or how this leaf isn't actually a magic wand, or literally anything so he can do the responsible thing and get his kids to school on time. But again, he acts like there isn't a choice here. He acts like he's been under a magic spell. The slow motion spell is only released when Bingo waves the wand again, leading to Bandit smacking into his car. <laughs> but hold on. Bandit is released from the spell when Bingo waves the wand, sure, but she's standing behind him. If this were truly a pretend game, there's no physical way he'd be able to know when she waved that wand. We don't even see his eyes moving or tracking behind him to look at her. Watch the clip again. In fact, we can actually go one step deeper. Here's the scene in a video editor where we can see the visuals and audio track. Check this out. Bingo saying, yeah, and the wand wave sound effect, they're right here. They're actually occurring after the wand is waved and Bandit's released. This right here shows us that there's no way Bandit would know to have sped back up again based on sound or visual cues. It can only be explained using real magic. And this is how we know magic exists in the real world. Yeah, Bluey, for real life. Because we get physical proof of magic existing. Like here, where Bingo sneaks into the bathroom, heavies Bluey's toothbrush without her hearing, and it just magically works. Ah! Ooh, that's weird. Ah! Ooh, it's heavy. Up to this point, Bluey hasn't been a part of the game, so she wouldn't know that things are meant to be heavy. And while she could just be pretending to not see or hear Bingo, the way her reactions are animated certainly seems to indicate that Bluey is unaware of anything that's going on. But the piece of evidence that really seals it. The one that is irrefutable and definitely proves that magic exists in this world happens a bit later that same episode. At the top of the episode, we watch as Bingo uses the feather wand to make her dad's cereal box, bowl, and spoon heavy, forcing them all to the floor. And throughout the episode, we check in on Bandit as he attempts to prepare his breakfast. But there's one moment that absolutely stands out. What's wrong, Bandit? You used to be able to... Lift spoons. Did you catch it? Here. As Bandit tries to use this broom and rugby ball to pry the spoon off the floor, the broom physically bends, and that ball is squeezed under the heavy weight of the spoon. And we see the broom bend, starting at the spoon. There is no way that this could happen if the spoon was at its normal weight. Literally no physical way for that to happen. Therefore, the feather wand actually had to have worked on that spoon, giving us even more definitive proof that magic actually exists in the bluey verse. And that suddenly puts other episodes into a whole whole new context. For instance, in the season 1 episode Fairies, the healer household is bombarded with shenanigans brought about by the dreaded fairies. You know what this means? What? We've, We've got, got fairies! fairies. <gasps>
Now, a lot of this episode is framed as Bandit trying to make up to Bingo for ignoring her earlier in the day. And on a surface level, you might just watch this episode and think that the parents are making the magic happen for their kids. But for as much as the parents here could have made some of the things in the episode happen, there is no way they did all of it. For instance, midway through the episode, everyone's hiding in the closet and Bingo is tasked with finding clues as to what the fairies might want in order to leave him alone. When she returns sometime later, the house's sitting room is a disaster. Toys and trash are scattered everywhere. Figurines are hanging from the ceiling. Koalas just chilling. Like I said, this is an Australian show. It's implied that Bingo was the one doing all this, but there's just no way. In order to hang those koalas from the walls and that shoe in the middle of the room, she would have needed a stepladder that's at minimum eight times her own height. And for as much as Chili and Bandit disregard the needs and safety of their fellow neighbors, I don't think that even they would allow their favorite four-year-old to use something like that unsupervised. But still, that little bit is happening off camera. What about something that's happening on camera in real time? That'd be pretty convincing, right? Well, in that very same episode, after discovering a fairy ring with Bandit's phone inside, they turn around and find that the entire yard has been covered in fairy rings. There is no way that Bandit and Chili could have set all of these up. We see them in literally every scene leading up to this big reveal. And if those rings had already been there, Bingo and Bluey would have already seen them. And if they're just pretending to not see them, you wouldn't get a bingo reaction looking like this. Her eyes are huge. She is shooketh by those rings. But we don't just have to assume here either. Again, we get physical proof that they weren't there a second ago. Well, the camera does its best to try and frame out the rest of the yard for the bulk of the scene, look at where Bluey's standing relative to that first fairy ring. If you map her position out relative to the wide shot that we later cut to, technically we should have been able to see that tablet fairy ring in the bottom right corner of the screen. But it's not there until Bluey knows notices all the rest of the fairy rings across the yard. This had to have been done using magic. So, am I saying that fairies exist in the Blueyverse? You bet I am. At the end of the episode, Bingo straight up sees a fairy setting up her dominoes in the same heart shape that Bingo made for her dad. Well, it could just be imaginary and the show tries to leave it open for interpretation, all the physical proof we have from bending brooms to fairy rings to slow motion wands prove otherwise. And now that we have a couple undeniable pieces of proof that magic exists here, so what? I mean, that's crazy and all, but why should we care about this? Well, we can actually track the source of the magic, and it's none other than... <laughs> If you look back through all the episodes and evidence, you'll realize that many of the imaginary games played throughout the series are actually all created by Chili using some form of magic. Some examples? In Asparagus, Chili gives Bluey a piece of asparagus and explains, It's a magic asparagus. It turns people into any animal you want. Chili's whispering this to Bluey, so Bandit and Bingo can't hear her and know what the game is. And yet when Bluey shouts, Donkey! Bandit immediately turns into a donkey. Chili's created a magic item and is teaching her kids to do the same all throughout the series. Magic that again goes a bit too far when Bluey transforms her dad from a peacock to a walrus and causes him to tumble out of a tree, landing on his back. That's not playing along for the funsies, that is risking severe personal injury. Additionally, Chili's often shown to be able to control the magic within the games that Bluey and Bingo come up with. In the episode Magic, when Chili sees Bluey and Bingo using magic on Bandit, the kids run and she's able to stop them. Who taught you how to use magic? In fact, Bluey just straight up confirms that she learned to use her magic from Mom. You use magic? 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 Yeah, you can use it to make people do anything. Mom taught me. Honestly, I could go on and on. Like in the ending of that very same episode where Bingo uses magic to sit her dad down and force her mom to the door, all without dad looking. Regardless, I think that the one big key takeaway of all of this is whether it's extreme pretend or real magic, the healers would suck to have in your neighborhood. Oh sure, this magical family may seem charming to all of us happiness-starved children of the internet for their love and commitment to play, but that's us looking in from the outside removed from the situation. As we've seen here today, this one family disrupts the flow of daily life for literally everyone around them. Whether it's in the line at the post office, or when you're trying to dry your laundry in the front yard, or when your name is Lucky's dad and you're getting mauled by magical crocodiles, ah, get it off me! attacked by magical snakes, snakes! Ah, get it off me! or just gnawed by lions. Oh, Mrs. Hella. Oh, I don't know about this. Imagine how it would feel to have your adult neighbor pop out of a bush and start gnawing at your foot. There's childlike whimsy and spreading a joy, sure, and then there's assault of your fellow human, a uh, fellow dog creature thing. So while it might seem to be all fun and games for Bluey and Bingo, living close to these monsters would be literally anything but. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And cuts.